Hello and welcome to today's episode of Taekwondo Life Magazine Live. My name is Mark Sirianis. I'm your host. I'm a third Don Black Belt and I'm the editor-in-chief of Taekwondo Life Magazine. Taekwondo Life Magazine is a member of the Believe Sports Network. Do you believe? While this show is a show about sports and martial arts and martial arts entertainment, uh, we try very hard to stay out of political issues. Um, however, there are times that events happen in the world that are so large that they dramatically impact sport. The pandemic was one of those things, right? Not a political issue, but a scientific issue or a medical issue. And we talked about it not so much as it related to the science or the medicine or the politics, but as it related to the world of Taekwondo. Today's episode is called the Taekwondo photo seen around the world. And it relates to the impact of and the implications of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which took place several days ago, and which is the certainly the most widely circulated story internationally around the world. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind you that football season is over. Basketball is in full steam ahead. The Olympics are over. Uh, I believe the Paralympics are still going on, and we're rapidly approaching 2024. But you got college basketball, uh, professional basketball, hockey. Um, the football draft is going to be coming up. And whether you want to do any of those things or just play some Las Vegas style games, the best place to do this, the number one place to do this is Bet Online. I want you to head over to Bet Online using your website, you know, their website, use your mobile device, sign up today if you have not done that. We've been talking about this for over a year, but if you have not still done that, you're going to get your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit by using the promo code BLEAV, B L E A V. That's we'll have a link in our show notes. That's BLEAV. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your sports and play all of your favorite games. Bet Online, where the games start. Okay, so again, without getting too much into the backstory, getting too much into the history, we know that during the week, there has been a conflict in Ukraine. Uh, Russia has sent troops and soldiers and there's fighting there, um, political wrangling, international responses, uh, the reasons for it depends on who you, who you speak to. Uh, you know, there are those folks that have very widely and varied opinions. So how does that relate to this program? How does it relate to what we're talking about? Um, well, you know, one of the things that we've talked about in the past, we, we talked about this in, in our Olympic programs, is that sport transcends politics, religion, boundary lines of, of country. Um the whole Olympic model is designed to let people, the modern Olympic model is designed to let people work their differences out on the, the field of battle of sport as opposed to on the field of battle of arms and armaments. Um, you know, if you go back to my childhood and you, the height of the Cold War uh, for so many people around the world watching Bruce Jenner, the most decorated athlete in the history of uh, the Olympics, compete against the Soviet Union and the decathlon was really a great way for the two countries to nonviolently work out their competitive spirit and gave people in the United States something to cheer about. The same with the miracle hockey team, uh, ice hockey team, of which the movie, I believe, Miracle was made. Well, you know, Taekwondo and sport is a way to work those things out. And as we understand and as we know, Taekwondo is a universal sport. It is in 211 jurisdictions and it joins us around the world to so many people. Uh, even when we talk about the Olympics, we understand that there is no sport in the Olympics that touches more countries than the summer games than Taekwondo, right? 211 jurisdictions is huge. It's virtually every country uh, in the world. So it, it is really something that is, that's important. So when we get out there, there's a commonality, right? 
when we're 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 there no matter what we many times we don't speak the language the universal language of taekwondo is what is comes from korea so we many times if if we don't speak the language we understand that we go and we spar or we do pumse the commands will be in korean even though we don't speak korean fluently we understand those commands but we we also more intuitively understand what the folks that are in our taekwondo community are going through what their training is what their expectations are and hopefully that they're people who desire for better things for themselves and for their family because we're martial artists not just sportsmen so we aspire for greater things and a greater life you know security is an interesting topic today because we're talking a lot about security and personal security something we talk about a lot and in the midst of all of the things that are going on now, one of the topics, the hot topics has been in the midst of this conflict is are countries like the United States in danger from cybersecurity threats from Russia or other countries? And nothing's more important than peace of mind when it comes to your computing. And that's why I use and that's why we ask our, our viewers to, to get involved and, and sign up for NordVPN to give you that peace of mind all the threats you face today on the internet, it's important that you can be sure that you have the best, the best VPN and Nord definitely is that. It's fast connectivity on most servers, next generation encryption to make sure everything stays in secure, stay secure. I do a lot of traveling, you know, I'm traveling now, the, the world has opened up for tournaments and I do so much traveling and I'm in public Wi-Fi spaces. So that security is, is so super important. Um, the great thing is you can use NordVPN on all your computers and devices, no matter what the operating system. It has unlimited bandwidth, and you never have to worry about slow connectivity. And the plan starts for under the price of a Starbucks cup of coffee. That's under $4 a month. I want you to grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash believe. That's once again, the, the code is believe, B-L-E-A-V. You get 70% off your NordVPN pen plus one additional month free. This is really risk free because you got a 30 day cancellation ability. Uh, we're going to put the link in the show notes. I want you to go over that and check it out. But in the midst of all this, in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all this negativity, there was one photograph that was circulated and we posted it on our uh, social media, but we certainly were not alone. Every single Taekwondo platform that I visited over the course of 24 to 48 hours surrounding the invasion, did I see this stark and dramatic image that people had probably seen before because it, I don't believe it probably came as a recent image, but it was recently circulated. And that image was of a Russian athlete, Taekwondo athlete, sitting next to a Ukrainian athlete watching a sparring match. Now we know from the colors that they're wearing that they're Russia and Ukraine, but we also know because their, their uniforms say on the back, Taekwondo Russia and Ukraine Taekwondo national team. Um, from the look of the sparring and the equipment they're wearing, it, it appears to be ITF. But regardless, we were all joined, you know, Taekwondo Life Magazine, we cover ATA, uh, we cover, um, AAU, we cover WT, we cover Kukumon, we cover ITF, we cover the whole spectrum of the Taekwondo world, because at the end of the day, even if there are some differences, we're all Taekwondo brothers and sisters. But this stark picture is a reminder to us with no words, with no caption of simply that our sport transcends boundaries, transcends political differences, transcends cultural differences. And that is such a significant, significant reminder. You look at that and without knowing these two men, young men, they appear to be young men from the look of them, not children, but young men. And you think to yourselves that regardless of the fact that they are from countries that have political differences, that while they're there in that arena, that they understand each other's pain, each other's victories, each other's success, and each other's uh, feelings. It is what unifies us as Taekwondo practitioners.
Now, let's go back to this, this photograph. For me, for someone who's been around this as long as I have, this photograph gives me hope. It gives me hope because I believe that Taekwondo and the proliferation of Taekwondo and Taekwondo's values around the world are things that make the world a better place. So that when I see someone at a tournament who is a Taekwondo practitioner, without knowing anything about them, without knowing they're right, we wear dough box. We talked about this as well. Uh, we wear dough box. So the fact of the matter is we don't necessarily know what person, how they dress, or we don't know what they do for a living. or We don't necessarily know what their religion is, but we understand them and we respect them and we mutually respect each other. It's part of our art. It's part of what we must do in order to be able to train. And that gives me hope. There's another photograph that's less widely circulated of two clearly young boys. And they're wearing what appears to be, in, in my mind, Sambo geese, the heavy Sambo geese. And on this one, the Russian boys on the right, the Ukrainian boys on the left, somebody's taking their picture and they put their arms around each other. Um, I believe it's Sambo. Sambo is very big, of course, in the Eastern European world. Not as much here, but but growing. Um, but again, a similar feeling, right? These boys went to competition, whether it's Taekwondo or any martial art, they, they understand the same values because we teach the same values. Now, there's some other interesting stories that came out of this whole conflict relating to uh, Taekwondo. One of them was that the European Taekwondo Open was going on in Albania, and that because of the things that occurred, the Ukrainian Taekwondo team, national team, was trapped in Albania. When I say trapped, they were, you know, not in their country when things went wrong. The Albanians offered them the opportunity to stay there because they could not go back to Ukraine because of commercial, the land, you know, the downing or the, the freezing of commercial flights. Um, the Ukrainians chose to return to Ukraine to help their families, to, to do what they can to support their families, whether that be in, in whatever various way they needed to. And the Albanians and the European Union, Taekwondo Union, assisted them in their goal, every single one of them, and got them on a bus and got them across the border to return them to Ukraine, which says a lot about them and says a lot about the spirit of the Taekwondo family. I'm going to read also now from a statement that came out today from the Ukrainian Taekwondo Federation. It says the Russian Federation with support of the Republic of Belarus has started a wave of aggression against Ukraine. This is an act of war, an act of sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, a brutal violation of the UN Charter. And we'll talk about this. I'm going to go on. We join the call of the International Olympic Committee to all international sports federations to relocate and cancel their sports events currently planned in Russia or Belarus. We also urge all international sports federations do not consider these countries for hosting for any future sport events before these governments stop military aggression against Ukraine and restore respect to the principles of international law. The Ukrainian Taekwondo Federation thanks the WT and the ETU for helping them send Ukrainian delegation home from the President's Cup in Albania, which is what we just referred to at this difficult time for Ukraine. Sincerely, Lesik Samatsikhaya, President of the Ukrainian Taekwondo Federation. So that speaks volumes about what's going on. Additionally, the IOC has issued a statement uh, which essentially does the same thing, which bans the participating sports federations from having sports, international sporting events in Russia or Belarus and from playing their national anthems at these events and possibly from having them participate in international competition. And you say, why? Why are they getting involved? Are they not supposed to be non-political? The answer is yes, but if you read why it occurs, it's because there was a pact that was entered into that the Russians would not take any military action against anyone until seven days after the conclusion of the Beijing Olympics, the 2020 Olymp 22 Olympics, or the Paralympics. And as we know from the timeline, this invasion occurred 
immediately at the end of the Beijing Olympics and before the end of the Paralympics, therefore breaking Russia's commitment to the International Olympic Committee and the International Sports Federations. So the punishment is to some degree for invading Ukraine, but more significantly for breaking their word to the international community. The impact of this to some degree is that we understand, particularly in Eastern European countries over the years, that the importance of sport to the country, to the country's legacy, to the country's self-image, and to those athletes that spend, unlike here where athletes might work a day job and be have to be funded privately and struggle to get to the Olympics, those athletes that participate in these worldwide international Olympic events, and Taekwondo events, they are funded and this is their profession and this is their job for them, for their coaches, and to prohibit them is a devastating thing. So to be clear, I feel really, really badly for those athletes and for those coaches, but I do understand. The point is very similarly, the Eurovision Song Contest banned Russia and Belarus from participating in those events. And you may say, well, who cares, right? It seems minor in, in relation to everything that's going on. But the reality of it is, and the reason of it is, is that there's an attempt to put a stronghold on finances, on sport, on entertainment with Russia to be able to bring the parties to the bargaining table and end the possibilities and the continuation of violence. So the events of the last couple of days to some degree, it's the yin and the yang, have, have really disillusioned me, have made me feel sad about the state of the world. I'm a person who grew up as a uh, Cold War child. You know, I lived through the 80s, the end of the Cold War. My children have never lived through these tensions and these heightened tensions with Russia or what was the Soviet Union. And to see them returned in my lifetime is really sad to me. But I have hope. I have hope when I see pictures of a Russian and a Ukrainian sitting next to each other in the same way when the North Koreans were invited to do a demonstration with the South Koreans, it brings me hope. I really am a believer. I do what I do here with this audience and with you because I believe that Taekwondo can save us. I don't mean that religiously or spiritually, but I believe the spirit of Taekwondo is the spirit of everything good. That's why I've been in it for my entire adult life and beyond. And I continue to try to do what I can to spread the word. So we'll put links to all of these things. This episode has been brought to you by Bat Online and NordVPN. We will put links. We're going to put that photograph in our post and we will uh, put links to all of these things. We look forward to seeing you in competition. Hopefully the entire world will return to international Taekwondo competition soon. And we will be able to celebrate, which is what Taekwondo Life Magazine is, right? It's a, we always say celebrating life through Taekwondo. My name is Mark Sriana signing off. Thank you.